All right, all right, all right, guys. We've got Basilisk Serral in the bottom right here and Liquid Cure in the top left. It's the Masters Coliseum Swiss Bracket stage. It's a best of three. And I'm especially curious to cast this because Cure has had big problems in his Terran vs. Erg in the last months. But I have heard that he's been turning things around and really fixing that matchup. Unfortunately, oh no. I don't think the SCV saw the Overlord, but the Overlord sees the SCV. Several gets a scout on an incoming second proxy barracks, which means, yes, Cure is going for a two-rax Reaper, but with one barracks closer, he's looking for that momentum. This is reminding me of that Gumiho series he took off Serral back in Sweden in the middle of 2023. An amazing two-rax Reaper opening, kept the pressure up, and uh, he went into Hellion Reaper, denied Serral's third base, and uh, and then went double port BC. Now, I doubt Cure is going to be quite that insane, but actually, wait, Cure's not building an SCV. Why? Why is Cure only on 18 SCVs? What is this? Why, why did he cut an SCV there? Oh. Okay, this is a very weird build from Cure. I guess he, he figured he couldn't quite squeeze an SCV in or something. He seemed to have had the minerals, though. Is that a mistake? Oh, okay. Maybe someone can explain that in the comments or, or the chat if they, they understand exactly what went on there. I, that's a little bit weird. So anyways, everyone has problems with Serral, right? We, we don't really expect anyone to beat Serral right now because he's almost unstoppable. However, Cure has apparently been fixing his Terran vs. Erg and leading into Katowice, big $500,000 tournament in the next week. I'm so curious to see how Cure is playing and what he can do to punch up against someone as powerful as a Serral style player. I think opening up with something tricky like this is great. Unfortunately, that first SCV path just was not great against that Overlord path that Serral took. So Serral already sees everything that's going on. The Reaper's coming in, gonna see if they can get some tax. Can he pick off some Zerglings or drones already one ling goes down? Great spore trick for Serral. Good micro. I would have liked him to commit with the Zerglings there rather than pull back through the grenade. Oh, there's another drone there deep in the red. Does bait him in, but you know what? He gets the drone, gets five Zerglings. Good start there for Cure. Is going for a Marine behind this. The Overlord sneaks into the back door as it loves to. You know, Serral, you think of a front-on fighter, but when it comes to scouting, this man will probe your back door more than just about any other player. He's uh, he's very, very willing to do that. Now, uh, only 20 drones. Serral's economy is not great, right? Uh, the thing is, it is only two racks. It's not too much of a commitment. The Command Center does go down in the expansion. This barracks is going home. Factory is on the way. We know Cure loves to follow this up with Hellions or Cyclones and potentially a Liberator. That's kind of the classic thing Cure does. What I'm looking for in the series from Cure, though, is already catching Serral off guard. And can he take this to the next step? Can he also come in with some sort of really crisp three-base timing attack? Because I don't really see Cure as a guy who's going to win endgame, but he can do very well in a macro late game. He just needs to keep up some sort of momentum, some way of leveraging an advantage on his opponent and giving himself the advantage. Like, he can't just be, you know, sitting there and saying, we're just going to both play a very even late game. And especially against Serral, no one really has the luxury of doing that. You kind of always have to be making a play versus Serral, but that can mount a pressure of itself on you where you kind of feel forced to make things happen. And when you feel forced to make things happen in a match of StarCraft, you do tend to throw your army into some very bad engagements. Third hatchery goes down only now at four minutes. That is when the third command center's already almost finished. Thankfully for Serral, he's finally got his, his two mineral lines going, though. And that is very important. Four Reapers, two Hellions are out. Two more Hellions on the way behind that. Stim starting up. Starport is, of course, up in that main base. And do we see that famous Liberator that he's obsessed with? Of course we do. <laughs> Cure is a man of habit. He likes to do the same thing over and over and over and perfect it. And, you know, Cure is the uh, sometimes the, the best TVT player in the world other than Maru. Quite regularly, he beats Maru in the first 10 minutes of the game and then finds a way to lose. Like, the problem is that Maru is a clutch player and Cure is not. That's why he loses to Maru. Um, if it wasn't for that, Cure would have won a lot more tournaments than he has. Uh, he's already often known as the best TVP player in the world. I think he's actually a bit more stable in that matchup than, say, Clem. Clem did have a hot streak where he's looking unstoppable, but has recently been getting dumpstered a few times in TVP. Weird to say, but there was enough enough TVP series in a row where he did get taken out by Max Max, Estrella, and a few other dudes. TVZ, though, is always the problem maker for a guy like Cure, because if you like to perfect your build, be a bit predictable, play the same thing over and over, well, you need to be exceptionally gifted mechanically. You need to be a Rainer level player, a Beyond level player who can do it with his micro, 
And Cure is not really known for that stuff. He's more of a, a solid macro player, really solid tactically, strategically, but he's not going to out micro you when you're, you're running Banelings into three of his mineral lines at once. Cure is not as fast necessarily as a guy like Serral. So let's see how smart he can he can do to take this out. Reaper Hellion coming in the front. Liberator comes in the back door. Very nice move. Liberator sieges the back. The Roaches will push back the Hellion Reaper. But look at that. Serral with a slow response. Serral did not have an Overlord down here on the bottom left because he wasn't expecting to take this third. He normally takes the third base on the other side. Now there is a queen in position. Those three queens will get rid of the Liberator. Liberator is just going to rotate on by. Hellion Reaper does scan. Takes out a few of these creep tumors. Leaving one active tumor there, though, is always a bit annoying. Queen and a Spore in the main, ready to deal with the Liberator. I like the positioning there for Serral, but Cure, patient, sieges the Lib. Says, let's wait till he's distracted. We'll come in later. Armory comes in already. Wait, what? Is he doing a super late Hellbat timing? Is he? Oh. Oh. Oh, he's going to do a Marine Hellbat push. Okay. He's only started plus one attack, not plus one armor. He didn't have the gas for that. But his Medivax, he's going to load up these Marines and stim across this map. It's going to be stim, shields, 16 Marines, uh, bloody eight Hellbats, four Reapers, and of course the Liberator will materialize in the back door at the same time. Oh, wait, he's going to go for a three prong. What's the armory for then? Is he actually going to use these in Hellbat form on the third base while dropping the main and sieging a Liberator in the natural? That seems to be the plan. This is something that roaches can counter if they're in the right positions. Lots of zerglings in the main. If they can get right underneath that drop, they can do okay. Serral needs to position these. He sees the medevacs coming, but he hasn't paid attention yet because he's distracted. Hellions in the back. Liberator sieging on the natural. That's massive. And in the main base. Okay, he does reposition the main. Stops the marines unloading. Oh, queen almost goes down. He's going to have to move that queen around the right side. It's actually impossible to see the white dotted line on the right side. What a bug here on the graphic, guys. The, the zone seems to be sunken into the map. That's something I haven't seen before. Double drop on the right side does take out the hatchery. A queen goes down on the left. Serral, he's trying to hold strong. Remember, he was behind in the earlier stages from the, the Reaper rush. He's up five workers, which is not really a lead for a Zerg player, but he's hanging on tight. Q adds plus one armor behind this. He's up on five barracks now. His third command center fully loaded, but no second factory, no fourth command center just yet. Q also is building a second armory, and that's a real problem for him. That's a mistake. That's him just being used to, oh, one one's almost finished. Let's start an armory. So his habits are kicking in at a time when they aren't needed. Two infestors for Serral, one of the best comeback units in Zerg vs. Terran. Oh, Q gonna lose two Hellions and a Reaper. Nice catch there for Serral. But he's gonna not chase too far. Oh, he's gonna grab an SCV or two. No. Siege tank is in range, does cover it, and he is defended for now. Hive is on the way, and Serral desperately trying to build workers. He's going to go a Hydroden, so he's planning, of course, Lurkers. We know that. Interestingly enough, no sign just yet of uh, of any sort of other diversification of the tech. Yeah, Serral's just going to play Lurker Viper, I think. There's already tanks building, but only one at a time. And even as I say that, the factory is actually idle due to a supply block. Still no second factory. The fourth command center has started for Cure. Cure has a very big army off of this production, but he hasn't powered to the next step. The second factory just now starting in the main base. Hive's almost finished. The Lurker Den goes down. Notice how there's no Hydra upgrades because Serral wants to start 2-2. Two, two. The Lurker Den, the Hive, he wants to build Vipers, Lurker upgrades. He can't afford to play Roaches, upgrades, Lurkers, and Vipers, and also add Hydra upgrades. So he's cutting the Hydra upgrades for now. The Fungal, if that landed on the Marines, would have been big, but Serral knew they were just out of range. And a good reaction by Cure to stop those Marines getting caught out. Hydralisks being built right now so they can morph into Lurkers. Cure pulling back. I think Cure is playing a really good game if he's playing against, um, you know, Shin, Mr. Mr. Ragnarok, someone like that, who's really known for just trying to kill you. But I think against a guy like Serral, he's got to make a play. And it feels to me like he's a bit too passive. I could be wrong on that. Only five barracks still. I mean, he's going to max out. He's, he's, he's still only on five barracks. Kua does not have the eight barracks. There we go. Eight barracks going down in the main base right now. Two, two coming in. Plus two vehicle weapons. At least he's got a second armor. He can add ship weapons really early or plating if he wants to get it. <laughs> Unlikely to do that just yet. Five tanks. Tanks are the counter to this style, by the way. So there's a funny interaction where this style usually pushes the Terran to get a lot of tanks out of two factories. And he does indeed have a tech lab on the second factory, so we can start building more. Um, but it also pushes them to build ghosts. And, and ghosts can be very effective also. So uh, ghost tank kind of counters this style. If there is a ton of siege tanks, usually you want to make broodlords off of this and transition 
but with no melee upgrades, it's hard to transition into more of a Lingbane Ultra or Broodlord style composition. So for now, Serral's still stuck on those ranged units, and with the Siege Tanks getting a high ground position, he doesn't have any Vipers. He, it's a bit of a hard spot to be in. If he had two Vipers, he could start abducting these Siege Tanks, trading really efficiently and be great as it is. He's going to lose a gas on this base. One of the Lurkers in range of the Siege Tank does pull that back nicely. Siege Tank getting quite a few shots off. I think it's time for Serral to give up this base. He's already uh, got his Infestors dangerously close to the firing line. Ravage is getting derped in there. He's trying to just hold on to some mining on this base for now, but it's this middle base that's more important. Looks like a Fungal did not land on the Marines. The Metavacs are going to drop on the high ground. Cure being very annoying right now. He's got three more commands and is on the way. A Ghost Academy just finished. And he is, of course, pumping more bio. He's going to come forward, but he does attack into the Lurker spread and take some big damage. The siege Tanks will have to move down. Looks like two tanks did fall there. Not sure if Serral jumped forwards on top of those or how that happened. He's going to go for a triple drop into the main base. Serral doesn't necessarily see that, but he's got a lot of Queens and Zergans there. This is a crazy drop. Oh, no. Cure flies into the Mass Queen, loses a Medivac. We've got Roaches on the left side. Double Medivac does pull back on that side. Ah, Biles taking out a Siege Tank. Very nice. Serral is really calmly navigating this scenario. And as I said, Broodlords or a swap back into a Ling Bane style are usually the next steps. Once again, Fungal gets dodged by the last second pickup. He's going for it now. Melee upgrades just starting though. So note, if he ends up with a lot of Zerglings fighting against plus three armor Marauders and Ghosts and stuff, they are not going to do a lot of damage. Roach Lurker counterattack, looking to be annoying, but with two Siege Tanks in position, I don't see this doing a crazy amount of damage. Snipes are also available. The bottom side, it looks like the Lurkers are inching forward. One of them does die, but Siege Tank count, three of them have died so far in this game. Looks like these SCVs barely surviving. Getting a Medivac in there to heal would be much appreciated for those workers. Serral's going five Overlords. He wants to go to the left, pick up that army, and then drop into the main base. Kewen knows that this is a chance, but he hasn't put a lot of preparation. Oh, he's got two Vikings. Never mind. Two Vikings forward should be enough for that. Oh, the Biles. Very nicely done by Serral. Using the Overseer to perv on those units. You'll notice the Overseer is a unit designed by Abatha to literally peep through people's windows. He pops a little eyeball on a, a goddamn antenna out of his head, and that eyeball has four more eyeballs on it. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's uh, an eyeball specialist. Ah perfectionist of the perversion. Concussive shells never got made. 3-3 three, three is on the way. Plus three attack about to finish for Terran. And the drop gets pushed back. One of those does die with a roach inside, but the roaches and the lurkers otherwise are unloaded. And Serral finds himself forcing it to late game. He's got a big bank. He's going to drag this one out. And now we re really get to see Cure tested. Because Cure is playing a stage of the game which he is known for getting to. But we also, we had a famous game back on Waterfall. You guys remember Waterfall? Great map. He had won against Dark about a year and a half ago in GSL. And you know what happened there? They traded armies. Uh, they both killed almost all of each other's armies. Dark kind of barely won the fight, but had nothing left that shot up. There was no mining left on the map. Q just needed to lift the building, float it to the corner, could have got a draw. And instead he GG'd and left the game. Similar to Maru vs. Scarlet, I believe was the famous map map on, was it King's Cove? Where he did the same thing a few years ago. Um, it's one of those things. A few players in these high-pressure scenarios, they're able to force draws, not win, but force draws in the late game versus the top Zerg player, and they, they forget they can force that. So we'll see if he can get to that stage versus Serral, or maybe even get a victory. Planetary Fortress does go down in the north side. Lots of Marines and Ghosts getting hit by the Lurker Spines. Orbital does pull back. Those SCVs are dangerously positioned right now. I mean, Serral's army sucks. I, I, gotta, I gotta point that out. That I, I think the army of Cure is better right now, but he's so passive. And I feel like there's no Vipers. It's just Lurker Roach with a couple of Infestors. I do think actually Cure could just do a big push. But he's he's very defensive and he's just kind of saying, I'm just going to play late game. Get building armor, get ship weapons, plus three vehicle weapons, slowly snipe Lurkers whenever, you know, it's on him to break me. This shows an extraordinary amount of confidence, something which I didn't realize Cure had. I pointed out that it looks like Cure versus Dark. Like Cure has not beaten Dark in a while. And it, it looks like it's so one-sided when they play a lot of the time. Where Cure, no matter how good the early game goes, just cannot beat Dark. But he seems strangely confident in this slower paced game against Serral. We'll see what he can actually pull out. The Marine Ghost pulling back. The tank's there trying to fire. Planetary. I love the reinforcing Planetary. But with only one tank helping support it, it will get taken out. The question is, how many of Serral's units will go down for this? 
Good lift on the command center. Good pullback on those SCVs. The siege tanks get some all right shots, but overall units lost are pretty even so far. Serral's doing a great job. Mass Lurker. It's meant to be countered by Mass Tank Ghost, but I think it's because there's only six tanks. There's only two factories right now. I actually think Cure could have done with a third and fourth factory, or, or Liberators also work, right? There's not many Hydras. There's not much anti-air. Siege Tank is there. It's going to slowly damage these Lurkers. Remember, it takes three shots to actually kill them. And he does pull back a little bit there. He's still in range of the command center, being a massive nuisance as Serral. He's going to throw a Nidus Worm up here as an attempted evacuation point. One Lurker does go down. Not really landing any snipes because the ghosts are so low energy. He's got to be careful about activating Cloak on those ghosts. I actually think you're better off not cloaking and saving that energy in most scenarios. This is going to be weird because you've got Lib Ghost. You've got that nice late game army. Serral still has 10 Supply and Roaches, 9 Supply and Ravages. Uh, those units aren't particularly great. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. He's, he's coming in. He's coming in. Lings, Vipers. Um, he does still have two Abducts, so an EMP lands, but he has enough energy left over for Abducts, taking down two Ghosts, and the unit's lost tab is disgusting. Serral is out efficiencying Cure. Now, he could mine the top right and steal resources from there. He could also have been stealing resources from this left side this whole time. That's the only criticism we can say of Serral is, technically, he could be stealing resources, because this is clearly a, an endgame is where this is going. Like, you're going to end up with Broodlord Infester or something like that, facing off against Thor, Lib, Ghost, Viking. So I like that he's, yeah, he's taking the top right base. He's thinking about that now. I think it's kind of dawning on him that Cura is not going to move out in this game. And he probably didn't realize this game was going to go for this long. But he is now saying, you know what? If we're just sitting here and mining the map out, I will take that corner. Nidus Worm to reinforce. These bases in the back are very easy for Serral to defend in the future. Uh oh. He's going to move forward, take out some turrets. Got to be careful. That siege tank now just barely out of range. Two turrets and a refinery. This is all free damage for Serral. It's going to grow that advantage that he's already been building for himself. Nidus Worm in the bottom left corner as well. It's very cool. Rarely do we see Nidus Worms used for reinforcing to different positions. But he can also use it as an evacuation point. That is the joy of this. The game has to slow down a lot for it to be worth doing this. Oh, Nidus in the back. But units see it immediately and shut it down. Army on the front. He throws a parasitic bomb. Takes the tank shot and pulls back. Looks like one lurker dies to the tank lib behind that third base. Yeah, people always say things like, Oh, oh nuke, 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 nuke just got 10 drones. Oh my god, I didn't even hear that. I did not even hear that. Do you guys, do you guys hear the nuclear launch detected? You probably did. I apologize, guys. My bad for not catching that one. That was nice. Harassment just to keep him busy. Likewise, the Nidus Worm's trying to keep him busy as well. I mean, there's changelings everywhere. That's what Cure has to keep up on top of. He can't be letting these Nidus Worms pop up. I don't think there's anything inside, to be honest. But, yeah, he's, he's not really respecting it. He just sieges five Liberators on it. And a few Marines and Marauders come in. And yeah, he gets himself a couple units. Did he kill the Infester there? I think he got one. So there's only one Infester left. Army on the front comes in. Nice, a Ducks. A couple Libs in a tank go down. Good clearance here by Serral. The Liberator actually gets back to safety, funnily enough. Serral now is behind the unit's lost tab, but we'll see for how long SCVs and Bly are getting taken out in the top right of the map. It's very close to even. Another nuke going up in the bottom left side. There are only two Ghost Academies, so we can only have two Ghosts loaded at a time. The nuke does land, gets itself some lava, a drone, but the Ghost goes down. And remember, a nuke itself is 100 minerals and 100 gas. Serral not going to be able to secure these corners. That's the problem right now for Serral. Cure, like I said, is a master of stalling out the late game and just getting to this, like, stalemate scenario. I, I don't know how often I've seen him win from there, but I've definitely seen him in forced draw positions. I, I know in the past, they were, I, I'm being a bit critical just because I think I've lost confidence after seeing the last few months of him playing Dark, where Dark has had his number. But I think especially after joining Team Liquid, I do think Q is gonna, gonna have a bit of renewed vigor, and he's no doubt been working on this match. I mean, it's, it's, it's his problem point right now is is the zergs are really just such a big issue so he's no doubt working on this matchup and i love the comp of 18 libs four tanks five marauders 18 marines six ghosts i think a few more ghosts is probably where i'd adapt this composition you might be wondering why only 51 scvs but he's got seven orbitals not quite an iron bank but i guess a light iron bank in that he's got you know full energy orbitals hanging around he can drop mules he can scan he doesn't need a gigantic worker supply Ghost running past, you're going to notice his gun. The gun is on the back. So the, the ghost there does have the gun on the back. He's going to try and sneak into Nuka base. Will he be able to get in there? Oh, Serral saw it. 
Serral spotted it running past, catches it with his, his anti-ghost squad. Roach Hydra Baneling rolls in the front at the same time, clears an orbital, files a tank, and he throws the roaches away on purpose. He's like, dude, I can't believe I still have these roaches alive. Please kill them so I can replace them with something better. That's a surprising amount of damage, I gotta say. He's killed an orbital and two planetaries. You should not be losing orbitals in this game as cure. That's one way you could lose in the long run is running out of that ability to scan. That refinery will go down as well. Oh, nice. Comes in, biles down two liberators without even losing a Ravager. Serral is still dead even in the efficiency and he's making his first 17 Corruptors. Oh me, oh my. Linkbane Ravager tries to roll forward. They're going to get wrecked. Dude, this is a silly number of Liberators. There's a reason he built 18 Corruptors. Drones are going to hop in the Nidus Worm, but a few of them get away and a few of them do not. Lurkers in the top right denying this base, still unable to land there. Cure has to save his SCVs. He doesn't have an 80 or 90 work account where he can lose 10 or 15 and not care about it. He has very few uh, SCVs saved up, so he's got to be careful. Lurkers coming forwards. Oh. Liberators will come forward if he drops the scan. Can take those bad boys out. Gets rid of one of them. You can see the Liberators actually overkilling on that one Lurker, both using the same shot on it. Nidus goes up here. It looks like these Lurkers will finally be going down. And Unitus Worm down here on the right. Now, if Serra doesn't mine this base out, that's a problem. However... Big advantage for him, he's mining that left side. Um, and, and he kind of needs to, to try and do that. Steal these resources from Q's side. He's already got so many in the bank. But remember, he's been mining his bases out so much earlier. So you always look at the game at this point, and you think, wow, Zerg Soimba, Zerg Soimba. You gotta realize there's a supply cap. Zerg can't just spend all that money and overwhelm with three times your army. Zerg has to look for fights. And you might be like, well, just make a wave, throw it at him, make another wave, throw it at him. Easier said than done. If you just headbutt in here, you will take some of the most god-awful fights ever. Serral's looking for the right engagements. He's poking and prodding. Trades a few Corruptors there for some really good damage. Using this to buy time so he can mine this base out. He's doing an excellent job of trying to get efficient trades while playing all this. Now, on the other hand, keep in mind there is like that lag effect where Serral's income will dip way before Cure's does. And Cure will be able to mine more from less bases for uh, the late game. Ling Bane's rolling in. Where are the libs? Where are the libs, Cure? His libs aren't helping out right now. The Corruptors scared him back. He was fighting with his bio alone. And this is amazing territory denial. Now, this is a huge thing. You might think, well, what does that really do? Because he's losing the mineral and gas mining, which now, if this happens at this stage, Cure is unlikely to ever mine these resources. He's going to be more focused on defending this base and this base over here. And unless he immediately counter pushes and takes this out. Serral quickly try to get back into the night as well. Does save most of those drones. Nicely done. Serral's going to run to the top right side. He's going to go for a bit of a PP attack by the looks of it. But he's been scanned. So I, I don't think he can do that. Notice how he hides outside of Kua's vision. Oh, he's in the sensitive vision. Oh, he should not go in there. Ghosts, Vikings, Libs can all deal with him. And actually, the Libs, they could kill the Corruptors. Mass anti ammo Libs. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Those Libs could win this fight. No, they're running away. Why is he running away? They, they, they can kill the Corruptors. The Corruptors are now spread out. They're flying over turrets, though. The Corruptors are kind of struggling a little bit. Turrets do some good damage. I, I, I think Cure could have just fought those Corruptors. I don't know about you guys. I think it was like 13, 14 libs versus about 20 Corruptors. I think when the Corruptors are clumped up, you can do decent damage. But I guess we have to check the upgrades to really know if that's true. Plus two ship weapons, plus one armor. Yeah, yeah, he could do decent damage. Because it's two times seven damage. And obviously the Corruptors only have three armor right now. So they're still going to take, uh, you know, two times four. Eight damage from each one. It's not a crazy amount. But uh, I do think you can scare them back, especially with the turret support. Nidus Worm evacuates these drones. Serral keeps having this base denied. Q is doing a surprisingly good job on this low economy with a giant army. And, and he's, he's adding more liberators. He's, he's still got so much bio. I think this is what I find surprising is just how much marine marauder he has. A lot of people don't use that much marine marauder in the late game. But Q is still using those. And that's actually pushed Serral to build a massive ultras. Is this the right call? I think as long as the ultras don't get hit by a snipe, ultras are always the right call. But, you know, having them not get hit by a snipe is easier said than done. Double parasitic bomb for the massive damage. Oh, so many air units going down there. Oh, he's going for it. Cheryl's going for it. Corruptor, Ling, Bane, Ultra rolling in. He's rolling in from every single side here. The Bailing's going after those ghosts. The Liberator's starting to fall there as well. Oh, me, oh, my. A massive cleanup. Wait, wait, why is he running away? Does he not have... I guess he doesn't quite have enough to finish him off. And he doesn't want the Ultras and Hydras to get sniped. So, fair enough. He gets in, gets out. And he's still efficient. Dude, Serral. I mean, we're seeing two things, guys. Cure is happy to play a very slow, long late game. And it's going to be on the, the, the Zerg 
to really find ways to finish him. This is kind of like some of my games on ladder, where I'm like, oh, this guy's really making sure, like, I need to do something. Because otherwise, otherwise he will just slowly eat up the map and, 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 and break me down in late game. But we're also seeing that Serral is the god of efficiency in scenarios where no other Zerg is. He is finding ways to take the best possible fights, and these Corruptors really have been the special source to reinvigorate his game. A mixture of parasitic bombs and Corruptor dives on top of these units have been game-changing. The Bio Ghost pulling back to the right side, and uh, man, dude. Oh, the orbital barely does survive. Good pullbacks and spreads, but I don't think it matters at this point. You're trading worse than Serral. Serral is remaxed again. He's at double the supply. And it's funny because I, I, I was looking at this and I was like, man, Q is getting to late game. Like, this is always this point where you think the needle is going to swing in the Terran's favor. And then you remember you're watching a Serral game. There's so many Zergs that that needle would swing in the Terran favor. The Zerg would start rolling Banelings into tank lines and Ghosts would start sniping things. But I do start to wonder to myself, is it the lack of Hellbats and Widow Mines? Because I'm looking at this game and going, why is the trading so abysmal for Cure? And I think there's just simply one thing. There's no Widow Mines and no Hellbats for the entire game. He's still on two factories. This has to be a massive mistake. I've cast enough games of Maru and the best late game TVZ players, and we all know they always stick to something, which is there's at least three factories, at least one on a reactor, and you're pumping Blue Flame Hellbats. That, that put a Zergling down to one hit point after each shot. Widow Mines that can kill 30 Zerglings or Banelings in a single shot. We just haven't seen any of those. And it's made the engagements much simpler for Serral. Where as long as he can handle the Lib, and then just overwhelm the Bio Ghost with numbers, he doesn't have to worry about Hellbats roasting his Zerglings, Widow Mines smashing his Banelings. And that's been very, very expensive for Cure. Serral can now deny the top right base. Losing that base in 15 drones was costly for him, don't get me wrong. Planetary has taken 39, 42 kills before it goes down. Q is going to float a new command center up here. Income-wise, Serra losing that base does see his income drop down, whereas otherwise it would have been massive. The fact that he's still stealing the resources in the top left is huge, though. He's so far ahead in supply. Cure is kind of limping towards one last maxed army, and if he does not find a, a, heavily, a, a, heavily, a heavily favorable trade, a heavily, a heavily flavorable, uh, trade, and that's going to be it's going to be very nasty. He's got the top right base coming in. Units lost tab is back to closer to even. Serral still ahead though. Still no reacted factory units in the mix. It seems like it's just not part of his game plan. He's like, no, no, no I play Marines, Marauders. I add Ghosts and Libs. Uh, so far though, he's going to need to show us something different to make this one competitive because Serral is slowly overwhelming him. Ling Ultra moving around. Nuke goes on on the left side at the same time. Corruptors do break through. That command center will fall. The turret's starting to go down, as are the SCVs. So many Banelings, guys. And we do see a nuke land, but it's Serral in the midst of that fight. Pulled all of his drones away. He pulled all of his drones away in the middle of a fight, guys. The ghost is now just using his, uh, his canister rifle. Good old C10 canister rifle to just shoot those down. But that is amazing. Oh, it's a trap. It's a trap! Admiral Akbar with a stiffy right now. No, no. Okay, I gotta hold it. Turns out Serral's waiting for the remax. He wasn't watching those infestors. I thought he was gonna pop up and fungle those boys, but I guess that is yet to come. Um, oh, here we go! Infestors! Infestors! Gonna pop up in the middle of this fight, are they? No, it looks like the infestor got popped. Looks like he must have spotted that one. But the Ling Bane Ultra Corrupt is gonna try and overwhelm regardless. Ghosts on the left side aren't getting caught. Oh, there they are. Fungal from underground. Banelings blow them up. They didn't have energy anyway, though, so they couldn't deal with the Ultras. That Infestor fungled and then burrowed before dying. Absolute huge finish energy from Cyril. Just bringing that one out, ice cold. And from the cold winter of the north, Cyril, in one of the most efficient and methodical Zergverse Terrans I have ever seen. That was perfect. All right, guys, going into game two. Cyril with one of the most perfect game ones I've seen in a while methodical and we see what happens if you let Serral play his game and you don't disrupt him. Just beautiful engagements all around. He's going gas pool this game and that is an attempt to shut down the two racks. So two racks reaper must be something that Cure is just doing pretty much every game right now. He has been known for picking this opening and I, I wonder is there a way to get way ahead with this as Serral or is it just make Ling speed to shut down the reapers and then keep macroing? Knowing Serral it's probably just keep macroing but I know Rainer and a few others, and, and Serral himself in the past, did do some really nice, like, Ravager Ling busts to kill the barracks on the low ground and straight up win the game. And I'd love to see more of those attacks. Because 
you know, I, I, if it isn't something that gets punished regularly, why wouldn't people just always wall off the low ground as Terran? And, and, and the thing is, well, it, it can be punished, right? There are a lot of things that can punish it, and it's they technically can defend if they realize it's coming, but it's a much narrower margin, whereas being able to pull up to this ramp, having your opponent funnel into this tiny little choke point, getting stuck behind each other, struggling to get up the ramp, is, is much harder for them to break than busting through this natural, which is a, a wide open area, easy to bust. Fallings going around the edge of the map. They are dodging the first Reaper. They're going to try and maybe intercept one of the other ones or flank them as Link Speed kicks in. He sees the pool. Uh, it knows it's a pool first because the hatchery is delayed. And the Queen in the main should be deflecting that Reaper quite easily. Reaper's going to rotate around, sees the Link Speed. No sign of a Roach Horn just yet as the Reaper backs off. Third command center is on the way, and notice only three Reapers, and immediately going back to marine production. Overlord pokes in, it's going to see that command center before the marine starts shooting it in a moment, and it does get back to the safety of the pillar. He actually spots the factory timing, which is nice. No surprises here for Serral. Q is going north. If he finds those lings, it'd be great. There are ten lings out. You don't want to build too many lings because you're already very low on workers as Serral. But 10 lings is not enough to straight up surround the uh, the Reapers. An accidental A move on the Overlord. The Queen throws a few needles at him. We're going to go out with just 12 Zerglings. Serral. Interesting. Mass Drone's on the way behind it. He's trying to recover the income since he did go Gas Bull and that massively hurts your early game. Third Hatchery is on the way. Factory's ready to swap over onto the Reactor. A third Command Center. Let me guess. A Starport up here and then a Liberator? Up next, yeah? Cure is uh, very methodical and he loves this opening. He's been doing it for a long time. The lack of surprises could be seen as a weakness, though. Two Cyclones to start. Bit of a surprise. I, I thought you'd open Hellions, knowing you're up against a quick Ling Speed. But he might just be saying, you know what? This could be a Bane Buster or a Ravager push or something. I need to get the Cyclones for safety. But I'll pop them on the inside of the wall rather than the outside, just to be safe. Now, 12 Zerglings I don't think can beat two Cyclones. I think Cyclones with a bit of Micro can easily beat that. Especially with the Reapers backing them up. And it's actually a Roach Horn on the way for Serral. Interesting. Sees the Reapers, backs off. Natural base saturated at four minutes for Serral. It's third base almost complete. 30 workers to 34. And look at that, the floating barracks plus the Cyclones cleans up the Overlord. Well done. I quite like the way this start's going so far. And this is why I don't really like the gas pool response. Unless you're going to make a big surround or something. It always feels like it stops you from taking, you know, extraordinary damage, but I never feel like the Zerg's, like, ahead after this start. Maybe you disagree with me. If so, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, everybody. I've really enjoyed, by the way, everyone on my um, YouTube lately has been posting a lot of timestamps after I mentioned that a few times, where I actually listen to you guys, like, <laughs> rather than just shouting insults if I say something wrong or you disagree, like, I actually read all of your comments. So uh, if you guys have a, a point to make, um, a lot more of you have been linking timestamps to the point in the game where something happens, and a few of you have, have like pointed out why a player does the build, or someone was saying, like, I was wondering why Hero went Cybercore before Nexus one game, but then wasn't even adept pressuring. I was like, why, why is he doing this? And people were pointing out he was doing fake cannon rushes in that game. So shout out to whoever it was who pointed that out. A big thank you, mate. Um, if you go for a fake cannon rush, the pylon is 100 minerals. You can't afford, you know, the Nexus for a little while until after you cancel the pylon. So you might as well squeeze the Cybercore in and, uh, and, and use that to at least get your first Adept out a little bit early. So there was like a logical reason for what he did there. Cyclone's doing some nice pressure here. Hellions do take out that Creep Tumor. Good pullback though on the Roaches for Serral. Only one Overlord has gone down still so far. He'd love to kill that Cyclone. Oh, Lings, Lings are down south. The Roaches are chasing. The Lings are down here, ready for the Sanger. The Roaches are trying to fight. Roaches can't beat this on their own though, can they? Lings come in from behind. But I like the way Cure moved north and took out the Roaches. The Roaches thought they could chase the, the, the units into the Zerglings. But it was actually the uh, the Cyclones and the Hellions that beat them. Like, don't be wrong, three Hellions and a Cyclone go down, so you are losing some valuable units. It's not the best trade for Cure, but better than losing all of those units and getting surrounded and flanked. Double Evo Chamber is on the way right now as well. Double Engineering Bay coming in, but the, the build seems a little delayed. I guess when you build Cyclones, you're always delayed, right? Fourth and fifth Barracks going down now as well. Factory building tank, starport building a reactor, third base finally landed. 50 workers for Cure, 68 for Serral. I love the Overlord positioning close enough to bait the Marines, give him time to pull back, but doesn't actually lose the Overlord. Oh, focuses down a drone. Thinking about maybe fighting the Roaches. Is Hellion Cyclone in the top as well? He's going to get a few drones up there, not bad. 
down in the south. He does start to fight with those marines. Oh, Stims again. I think it might be time to leave. I think it's time to leave for Cure. Stays a little bit longer than I would have expected, but it's worth it because he gets a lot of damage with these guys. Good pullback by Serol. Oh, Cure's like, let me at him. Let me at him, bro. The Reapers really want to get those ready point drones. Two more roaches pop out, but they accidentally rally in the wrong, rally in the wrong direction. And oh, two drones deep in the red. Nonetheless, 13 workers go down. Unit's lost tab is in favor of Cure. And most importantly, I'd say he's still got some presence on the map. He should definitely go after that Overlord. He's going to try and take that out using the boosty zone. And does pull south once again. Creep in the middle is still looking strong. Creep in the north still looking strong. Serra just needs to replace it in the south. As well as he really needs to get a tumor out to the edge of this main base. Because that's a, a bit of lacking mobility and it makes it hard for him to move his queens over. He also only has four queens. How many queens did he lose? Only one. Oh, he played a very light queen style. Serral can't really do a roach push at all in this game. Q is in a good spot. He's got a fourth command center on the way. His second factory. Armory's coming up. He's actually macroing really nicely. Continuing to drop. That being said, Serral's going to take the rich gas. And it looks like he's playing the exact style from last game. Three infestors. Bunch of roach ravager. And we should be seeing the hive and the hydroden go down in just a moment. Defending the drop. Where's that hive and hydroden? Serral's surprisingly slow on it this game, but I guess because he's only at 120 supply and he feels like he could get attacked at any moment. He's just trying to defend the harassment and, of course, secure that rich gas base. Marines do come in. Fungal traps some of them. Infesta. Oh, good fungal. All right, gets rid of a few of those Marines. The last few do pick up and the medevac pulls out. Eight drones going down, though. I think that's a good, worthy trade there for Cure. Serral on only 58 workers. His 2-2's just started. Still hasn't... He doesn't have the money for a hive. I actually agree with him staying on Lairtech now because... Yeah, this has been a fantastic start for Cure. Cure is flowing right now. And wet. really well done. Really, really well done. The drop, drop in the back finally uh, being AFK'd there. Away from keyboard, for those who don't know that term. Basically means he wasn't watching. Uh, Medivac does take out just a drone or two. Picks up, gets on out. Trading a marine for a drone, always a good trade for the Terran. Eats into that current income. Messes up the uh, mining a little bit. Banely Nest is on the way. That tells us Serral's thinking of just going back into Bane. So, little surprised he's going plus two range. Thought he would go straight for melee if he's going to go into Banelings, but indeed he has decided. No, 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 that's fine. We'll get plus two range, then we'll go melee. He definitely will not go plus three. I'd make a big wager on that. Three more barracks going down in the north. Plus two weapons is on the way on the engineering bay. He's forgotten plus two armor, which is unfortunate, but a big marine tank army marching forward. He's got to watch out for the fungals. The Infestors don't seem to be too close, though. The Marines happy to fight here as the Siege Tanks move forward. The Roach Ravager has to fall back. Zergling in the new fourth base does see that one land. Siege Tanks still getting some shots off, but good bile. Takes out a Siege Tank, and the Infestors are staying out of scan range. Oh, he wants to fungle those Marines. He was trying to hide them so that Cure forgot the Infestors exist. But Cure does an excellent job of being prepared for it. Oh, as I say that! Oh, the Infestors are just out of range. How do you deal with this push, though? Well, I guess that's one way. Realizing he has rallied across the map, he roaches push the front. Now, as Cure F2s his army home, he might be able to jump on the siege tanks since they're going to be undefended, but no, perfect army split. Cure sends a section of units home, but not that many. And look, he even emergency walled off there, thinking the roaches were going to get in his base, and he did not want to let that happen. Apologies for the reduced frame rate today, by the way, guys. I'm not sure why my computer's struggling so hard. Just uh, must need a restart or something like that sometimes get to restart it and it does uh lag a little bit more than normal roach is pulling back to the north marine marauder trying to save after it roach is getting a good fight cure oh careful man careful cure still marching forward his army on the front has not exposed itself at any moment and this is a hard position Serral's still massing or at least he was massing roaches for a long time these roaches get a great fight on the third though that's the biggest mistake q has made this game the Vikings land and clean up those roaches, though. Now the roaches crumble, but he pulled his units home. Oh, he was so disciplined for so long. And he finally pulls his whole army home. That squad of roaches finding a good fight. Made Cure panic. Pulled his whole army home, leaving his siege tanks behind. And we knew that is what Serral was looking for that whole time. Patience from Serral. Outmatching the patience of Cure and finally finding those siege tanks. Eight siege tanks have died this game. And that's, a, 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 you know, heaving a sigh of relief for Serral. He somehow kept his rich gas base alive, which by all accounts should have gone down to that push if he was any other Zerg player. And now he's into Ling Bane, but he's still building. Why is he still built roaches, guys? He's just rebuilt a bunch of roaches. 
he really needs to stop building roaches at this point. If he builds any more roaches this game, it's very bad. I guess he just thought there'd probably be another push and he needed a unit because Zerglings with plus zero against what he assumes are 2-2 two, two Marines. We know they're only 2-1. It would be pretty bad. So he's correct to build some roaches for safety, I guess, but he definitely doesn't want to be building too many more this game as they are appallingly bad for their supply once you are maxed out in late game. Vipers with Parasitic Bomb available, as well as three Infestors. The mix of two Spellcaster types, something that, you know, it used to always stress me out. And I realized it's just that I was trying to force it too much. I was like, oh, I need to land both of these spells. And since I've become much more relaxed with using both Spellcasters, I've realized that there are definitely times where I don't use them both, and I just forget about one. But I'm just not as hard on myself about it anymore, and I just go, hey, if the opportunity presents itself, he's doing a big army, I, I get time to set up my units, and I, I kind of send my army in with a flank, land a, a nice combo of blinding cloud fungal that's great and if not no worries and i've actually gotten way better at doing it i, I think a guy like Cyril is obviously so relaxed when he does it i don't know if he's ever had that issue counter attack of roach ravager and festa eh, it doesn't really do any direct damage just forces a bit of a repair purple gas base is still looking healthy Cyril spire finally on the way the trick is of course having a control group system that you're comfortable with as well which a lot of players never get the hang of Serral, a master of control groups, main army one, Vipers two, and of course his offside flanking squad is on four. That's these guys over here on four. His infestors do not have a control group, by the way. That is bizarre. He's F2 controlling, he's F2ing to find his infestors. He's going to go for it on the front tank line. Lingbane Ravager takes out a tank. He actually doesn't take out the second one. That's funny, watching that queen fight that tank is kind of bizarre. Is the queen going to win? <laughs> you don't see that very often, a queen wins the fight. Oh no! First Infestor goes down. I think it was a full energy one as well. Oh, the Bio Ghost runs a bit too far forward. Cure, you've got to be careful, mate. He does have to Cloak to protect those Ghosts. Ooh. You know, Cloak on Ghost is not a bad move, but I do feel it's a bit of an emergency move. It does use a lot of their energy. He's pushing forward again. Cure trying to bait several forward. He wants to deny this Rich Gas base so badly, but the flank comes in. Roach Ravager Infestor will take out a few Ghosts. Will take out a Siege Tank there as well. Oh, the Infestor could pop up in this fight. Maybe make a difference. Oh, he pops it up. He does land a decent fungal, immediately reburrows. Several so good at the reburrow afterwards. Can he clear this push up? Looks like there's a few cloaked ghosts. He doesn't really have any detection right there. And the ghosts are being a nuisance. Oh, he snipes a viper on the way out. Lovely attention to detail for cure. Despite all of this, Serral is still dead even in the trading. And that is absolutely bizarre. I kind of feel like cure might want to not build too many orbitals and just keep up the pressure. And so, you know what? Like, let's just try to lean into an advantage. Just keep the push going. Keep the march across the map. Because remember, we're seeing the Ling Bane swap now. There's only two factories. There's no third factory. It's just two tech lab factories. He's going to need a reactive factory if he wants to play late game. We learned that from the last one. But there was no sign of Cure making that adjustment in game one. And therefore, I can't imagine he's going to make it in game two. How often do you see a player completely change their style? Uh, it, well, not even completely change their style, but completely change their composition in a late game scenario. Making that detailed adjustment mid-series to changing up, you know, your, your factory comp makes it, it's, it's something you rarely see. Especially in late game where players normally have thousands of games to come to the conclusion this is the best way for them to play. They might not think it's the best way to play. They might've seen players do better, but they might say, hey, I am i can't do what Maru does. I've tried it a thousand games, couldn't get the hang of it. I have more success with this style. It's obviously uh, one of those things you go, well, just, just, practice it and do it like he does it anyone who's had to play against guys like Sarah Rayner and Dark repeatedly while trying to just do what Maru does can uh, of course kind of have a bit of a wry smile in their face at that suggestion and go if only it was that easy <laughs> just do what Maru does and just practice it more until you can do it oh the SCV is not evacuating yet but there we go it does get most of them out nine workers going down Hydraling Bane as it's more of a Ling Bane army now, guys, we, we definitely need a transition into anti-Ling Bane units, but just not seeing it. Bio Ghost Siege Tank. Can we do it with that army? Let's see. Cure has unable to trade efficiently. Um, Ling Bane is meant to be grossly inefficient, guys. Roach Ravager is not meant to be efficient when you're maxed either. Several, of course, is using the leverage of Spellcasters. And Infestor, two Vipers, two more Infestors building. Those are units that can usually find efficiency, but it's rare you see someone consistently find efficiency every single fight. Several is that rare creature. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, man. Several, if, oh, Jesus. He's the most overpowered pro gamer there is. 
I don't know why, guys. I was watching it. I was watching um, some some Pal World the other day, and I'm just imagining if you know if if if, if Sarah was a, a Pal or a Pokemon or something like that, just how excited people would be to catch him. Um, his attack would be unbeatable, and he would literally be broken and need to be patched out of the game. Oh, massive attack comes in. Parasitic bomb. The Metavax Banelings rolling forward. Hydra's trying to take out some units. That was actually a good defensive spread from Cure, but he's not able to get any any snipes to really punish or anything like that. Top left, I think. Something was up there. Maybe just the building's getting placed. Serral says, okay, time to mine the middle of this map. This guy really is just surviving for a long time right now. As those Banelings morph, though, the Massling Bane, how do you trade well against that? Well, 3-3 three, three, Concussive Marine Marauder is not a bad idea. Serral has 3-3 three, three for range, plus 3 melee. Halfway done. Greatest Meyer is on the way. He's going to go for that drop that he's loved doing recently. I do still... Oh, oh, infested. Oh, my God. Is Serral going to break this? That's a massive tank position. So much bio marauder ghost. That was a good engage for Cure that time. Cure finds himself in the lead by a thousand resources. He's got to watch out, though. There are still three infestors. One there, one there, and, of course, this one that's moved down south. Two vipers on good energy, waiting for an opportunity as well. Serral's going around. A pack of zerglings for a run by an orbital. Not even a planetary. Oh, Cure. Oh, Cure, that's that's real sloppy for the late game. You can't be just leaving an orbital out in the open. He does deny Serral's rich gas base, but the rich gas has been mined out. How much gas could a rich gas gas if a rich gas could mine gas? Um, oh, no. Well, we might be trying to do tongue twisters, but right now the only thing Serral's got his tongue twisting is these SCVs, naughty bits. They are getting ripped to shreds. He's got... He, yeah, he's going to have to push the south side or get a, some other defense down here. I mean, a liberator is, is a good de-incentivizer where it'll slowly pick off the zerglings but we'll see exactly which way they go the marine marauder is going to clean up those lings if they can scan it but no mules fresh mules and he could unburrow whenever he feels like it Sarah's mining the top middle base he's starting to take the bottom middle base and he's keeping the pressure on ling bane hydra coming forward lings very good against marauders but there's enough marines and ghosts in there to ruin their day. The lings start damaging the SCVs. Oh, lings in the north as well. Oh, he's got too many openings. Any holes a goal for these Zerglings, and they will run rampant. You cannot be leaving three different bases with orbitals and no liberator, no bunker, no tank, and orbital burns down. Cure is putting himself in a scenario where he has to multitask like a god, but he is fighting the Zeus of Starcraft right now. Several raining down thunderbolts on his head. Picking off a ton of siege units in the middle, denying an extra 10 SCVs, a ton of mining, killing an orbital command center. Cure is trying to do this like giant push through the middle, which is cool. The idea of I'll put enough pressure in the middle that this will work. The problem is he's leaving such obvious openings on the flanks that Zeril is able to just run lings around and he's going to find another two siege tanks, a bunch of SCVs and marines as well. More lings in the south. The bio is already overstimmed. There's only six medevacs. Zeril is being an utter nuisance to play against. Now, funnily enough, Zeril's bank is not that giant. He's only 5,000 resources ahead of the unit in the, in the bank, which sounds not that big. Until you remember that he's trading evenly all game. As long as he's trading evenly with Cure, the fact that he has a massive bank advantage is a game ender. Cure needs to find efficiency. He needs to choke down Serral's control. He's going to deny the bottom base and this one, which is actually still very fresh, by the way. So that's a very good base denial for the future. Serral, though, as long as he's sucking up resources in the north of the map, I think he's okay with this. The thing is, Q is going to F2 his whole army north. That's great for denying the northern base. That's going to put Serral's economy way down. However, you know what's going to happen. Lings are going to hit these two bases. There are no precautions for that. And it's it's not will they, it's when. It's when will Serral send those Zerglings south, because you know he's going to do it again. The only thing working in Q's favor is Serral's probably assuming, oh, he must have defense there now. He wouldn't be silly enough to not have any defense there. 24 siege tanks have died in the making of this game. I was about to say, it's a surprise he hasn't got Broodlords yet with how much Cure is obsessed with the siege tanks, but indeed he has. Nine of these are on the way. Medevac and a turret goes down. There is some bio defending the southern base, but they only have a single Medevac to heal up all of that wounded bio. In the north, a big spready coming forward, a bio tank ghost trying to take this base out. The problem is the Moustache of Doom is about to head over here. A big whole bunch of Broodlords are going to move from that left side. For those who don't know, Broodlords are basically the most savage creatures known to man. Uh, rarely in warfare have humankind been known to use their children as weapon. Broodlords are literally designed to throw their children at their enemy's face. They've fed them crack, they've taught them rage and a will to kill and murder, and that's all they want to do. Serral attacking the south, bust the orbital with Hydra Bane. 
In the north, the broodlords throwing their children in from a distance and then pulling back to safety like any negligent, abusive parent would. They're going to pull up to the top left, backing away for a moment, waiting for a good fight. Serral happy to give up this base. Looks like he did lose the fight in the bottom eventually, but killed the orbital, which means there is only three orbitals left. There is nothing even resembling an iron bank in this game. There is no line of credit. Cure is a high-risk subprime mortgage. This is, he's the most sub of the subprime mortgages. And I'm telling you guys, if you're the Iron Bank right now, you're only looking out to give loans to Dom mortgages. You need you need a Dom mortgage. You need a Big Daddy mortgage. You need someone that can put down a 40% deposit. You know what I'm talking about. Cure right now is saying, can I get 110% loan, please? Can I have a literal negative 10% deposit? Uh, the Iron Bank's saying no. No, this is a risky cause. Cure says, you might say my economy sucks. But guess what, guys? I have a gigantic army. And I'm getting Thors. Thors counter broods. I've got 11 ghosts, 17 marauders, 38 marines, 7 medevacs, 3 libs, 2 tanks. He's going to go for one gigantic army. Serral does have a 5,000 resource bank to draw on, but he's going to need to be efficient as he finishes this game off. Libs in a turret finally on this base. They will defend that. Q is like, I know I don't have a good economy, but I'm still mining. I'm still mining. I'm denying this purple gas base, which once again goes down. Serral's income is not that big anymore. The Broodlords, I'm surprised they didn't push in a little bit more earlier. Vikings are up to just one, but two more are building right now. Where are the Thors? We've got two Thors on the field. Two Thors against nine Broodlords is not the best battle for the Terran, especially with those Spellcasters. Vipers coming in. Blinding Clouds! Blinding Clouds all over the tanks! Oh man, the Hydras on the left flank seem to be losing, but Banelings come in to reinforce. Broodlords coming in from behind. Dude... Serral's army's kind of thinning out, but wait, no more Hydra and faster big fungal! The big juicy fungal comes in from the north, but he's got, he's out of detection. He can't see the ghosts! He can't see the ghosts! Serral is eventually, I mean, he kills the whole army though, so does it matter? Oh, Marauders, Marines, Ghosts and Vikings coming in, but the Marines and Ghosts running into their doom right now. Two Vikings and a Lib are trying to kill these Vipers and Broods. they got to focus them down right now. He is going to take out a fair few. There's Hydra's big building, though. Hydra's will be here in about five seconds. Only one more Broodlord will fall. And look at that. They get a Liberator for their troubles. They're going to get the Vikings as well, or at least one of them. Several holds on. And even though Cure did manage to take out one of his armies and trade efficiently for the first time in this game, it's not a very impressive efficiency difference. It is a thousand resources difference in a game where several... We'll look at that income tab, has had the biggest of leads. At one moment in this game, QA had a temporary resource boost in the last 10 minutes. The rest of it has been Serral rich, Serral methodical. And this once again reminds me that Serral is back in something resembling that 2018 form. I've talked about this in ZVZ. Leading into Katowice, you can, no one can beat him in Roach vs. Roach right now. In a standard game, even if he's a little behind, he will out-trade every other Zerg in ZVZ. If he can play like this against Terran as well, that will be amazing. And I think, you know, we've seen the series versus Maru, the one where he lost. He was on the back foot quite far for a long time. And then the next series he looked dominant in. Here, he looks unstoppable. Who, who can take him down? Clem. Clem is the one player that can take down Serral. But even then, I don't think he takes down Serral in a calm, slow late game. I don't think he's likely to. I think he it's still a momentum-focused, I kind of got to kill you. I think the pressure's still on Clem's back to get momentum, get advantages, and keep those advantages. Infesta tries to unburrow. Serral is swarming. And uh, I think... Is Protoss the best shot of taking out Serral at Katowice? I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I wanted to look at this series because I heard there was a lot to learn about Serral and Q's late games. And I think Q's late game looks quite good. And I'm really curious to see, can the other Zergs deal with it? Against several, it seems like the lack of Hellbats and the lack of Widow Mines. You can see in the Units Lost tab, he only built the four Hellions at the start, not a single Widow Mine. It's not good enough. I think you need to use some of those units against several. This series proves that. But will the other Zergs be able to handle it? And will Kua make that adjustment leading into Katowice? I don't know. I do know, though, that several is my big favorite to win this next $500,000 tournament. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.